Hello, welcome to our kitchen. Our kitchen's like everybody else's, I suppose, in one respect. There's always somewhere a collection of cookbooks. You can see some on the dresser just behind me. Uh, and each of those books has, a resp has recipes in that gives you a list of various ingredients and a method to make a dish you want to eat or a cake that you like or something like that. All those ingredients you blend together and you cook them and you have an end in view, a finished product, whether it's for a meal, whether it's a cake, uh, whatever it is. Often those ingredients have kind of contrasts, different flavours, different tastes, and sometimes you think, why would you put those two things together? Here's one that we like. It's a, a chilli lemon splash fish. It's an Ainsley Harriet recipe. There's quite a lot of different flavours and tastes in it, and I think it's really delicious. Or if you like Chinese type food, you could make your own sweet and sour sauce. Or occasionally you could just cheat and pop into Sainsbury's and get their sweet and sour sauce. But again, it's a contrast. It's something sweet, something sour. Uh, the other thing I like is this. Salted caramel. It's great when you warm it slightly and use it as a sauce on ice cream. It's terrific. Uh, but you've got to get it right. You've got to get the proportions right. Too much salt overwhelms the sweetness or too much caramel and you can't taste the salt. Really, my favourite recipe is here. It's a beetroot and chocolate cake. Now, they seem, they seem odd things to put together. They're contrasts but actually they work really well together. While some of the ingredients may seem odd, the point is that they blend together and they make the finished article. You've got to get the proportions right, but that's part of the art of cooking, so I'm told. As you read through John's Gospel, you'll notice there are a number of contrasts there. If you like, in the recipe that makes up John's Gospel, there are some contrasting flavours. You probably noticed when you read chapter 1, there's this contrast between light and darkness, between life and death. And there are another, a, a number of other contrasts as well. You'll see them in our section this coming week, uh, between sight and blindness, between faith and unbelief. In the whole of our section, Jesus says things like his time or his hour has not come. But the contrast opens the next section, chapter 13, and says the hour has come, the time has come. These contrasts all work together to produce, as it were, the finished article. When you blend them together with some of the other ingredients, and there are many, aren't there, in John's Gospel, there are things like the miracles, the miracles in John's Gospel are always called signs. And they're called signs because they point to something. Indeed, they point to Jesus and who he is. Uh, another set of ingredients in John's Gospel are the I am sayings, where Jesus makes great claims about himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. Now, when you blend all of these uh, ingredients together, the finished product is something that John is aiming at through all of these different ideas. He builds a picture of who Jesus is, why he has come and what he does. And that picture is exactly what John intends you to understand by the time you come to the end of his gospel. All those ingredients are mixed together for a reason. And John gives you that reason in chapter 20, verse 31. Let me just read it to you. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So as we learn more, as we see the contrast between Jesus and other people, as we see the, the things that he has to offer, 
we begin to see who he is and why he came and why we should put our trust in him. Let me just give you one quick example finally from uh, our section for this coming week. It's the contrast between the leaders of the Jews and Jesus himself. Uh, you'll find it when you get to chapter 10. It's a picture that comes from the Old Testament. You'll see it in Ezekiel 34. There the leaders of the nation, the leaders of Israel, are called false or bad shepherds because they've looked after themselves and not after the sheep, after the flock of God, the people of God. And God in Ezekiel 34 promises that one day he, as the good shepherd, the great shepherd, will come to rescue his sheep, to care for them, to look after them and to bring them safely home. And when we get to John's Gospel, we see exactly the same contrast between false and true, uh, true shepherd the bad shepherds of Israel and the good shepherd who is Jesus. And that's precisely what he's come to do, what God promised in the Old Testament, to rescue his people, to care for them, to look after them, and to bring them safely home. Well, I hope you enjoy uh, reading through the next section of John's Gospel and that some of those contrasts will help you see how, who Jesus truly is. As for me, before I do that, I think I'm off for a piece of beetroot and chocolate cake. Enjoy. <laughs>